So you want to make a mead and you want to make it on a pretty tight budget. I'll show you how to do that. Hey, this is Man Made Mead. Today we're going to be making a mead on a $12 budget. So uh, what I have here, this is $12 for your ingredients alone. I want to emphasize that because you do need to spend a little bit of money on maybe some equipment. However, you can, you can do this on a total $12 budget with less, you know, nice results. But let me tell you what you'll need for this $12 ingredients budget. So my ingredients alone, like I said, are 12. This is three pounds of honey. I got this at Sam's and it is raw unfiltered and I got it for $9 on a good, uh, it was a really good deal. Then I also have a gallon of water, cost me a dollar. And um, the yeast, so we're up to about $10. And this is a Lavin EC1118 packet. You can get these things for very cheap, a, a dollar or two, especially if you buy them in, um, in you know a pack of five it's pretty pretty cheap so that's all you need for ingredients you will need some extra things if you want to accurately measure your meads um, gravity and some various things and that's some equipment so i'll get to that here in a second but most importantly you need to have sanitizer this is star sand star sand is used for sanitizing equipment and things i use distilled water star sand and a spray bottle i spray everything down it's all good i'm also going to be using a drill with a stirring rod on it, um, and you can use a wooden spoon, you can use whatever to mix those things. That stuff works well. I have a, uh, a cylinder for um, you know, using and measuring my gravity, so I'll be measuring that today. Um, and I, I last, and I put it in here, I think, I have a hydrometer, and of course a glass carboy. Uh, a hydrometer will help me measure the gravity a glass carboy for storing everything in. Um, the equipment might cost you a few more bucks, but is reusable. The $12 is only for the alcohol you're making. 12, uh, by the way, a gallon of mead is equal to 12 beer bottles or four, and wi four wine bottles. So you're looking at um, basically a dollar a bottle for your mead, pretty good price. So let's go ahead and get started. Very, very simple process. Um, when you're making a mead, your first step is always to mix your ingredients together. And we are going to, today, we're going to be um, rehydrating our yeast, which is a very, very simple process. All we're going to do for this is take our yeast, which is here, and we're going to um, put it into a cup and we'll add some water onto it and that will rehydrate the yeast. So let's do that real fast. All right, so I'm going to pour my yeast into my cup. This is the Lava EC1118, very, very good yeast for traditional meads amongst others. Um, I use it all the time. Pour some of my water on top, and this will sit in the process and the time while we are uh, rehydrating everything, it will ultimately rehydrate, uh, or excuse me, as we mix everything, it will rehydrate and do what it needs to, which helps the yeast ferment. Just to let you know, that's very, very important. Now, we're gonna start mixing ingredients. Um, I forgot one thing, and that is my funnel. It is over here. Again, I need to spray it down to make sure we're, we are good. Okay, now, we're going to pour some water in first into our glass carboy because honey sticks to the bottom of the carboy. You can use plastic fermenters. You can also even, and I do not prefer this method, if you want to go the little even cheaper route and not have any glass carboys, you can simply use the water container that um, you know the water comes in to store everything. Again, not my preferred method because uh, actually using and storing um, storing mead in plastic over time does not do well. Not really even, I mean, fermenting does okay, long-term storage doesn't work. You could do this in here if you wanted to and save even more money. So, now we've got about half of our water in here. We're going to now pour this honey in. This is raw, unfiltered honey, which is perfect for what we're wanting. I'm going to just pour it straight in. I will get all three pounds in. Um, I often, if you can, afford it and equipment wise uh, if you have a drill it helps but also if you have a stirring rod this is a degassing or stirring wand that I have on my drill it works really well for this process I will also add you do not need to uh, it's not required to use um, hot water when you are doing this process uh, because the generally the water room temp water will mix in just fine especially if you have a way to stir you can also shake your stuff I have um, done the shaking system 
for a long time and I just kind of eventually got tired of it because literally it is a little bit tiring and I switched over to just stirring. I'm going to pour some water into here and we're going to get all of the honey out of this. I'm going to shake this up. Okay, I've got all of my honey out of here. Very easy. Now we're going to stir the rest of this. This is what we call your must. When you're making mead, it is very similar to making beer, wine, all that stuff. In beer land, your mixture of your, your malts and your grains and all that stuff is called your, um, your wort, and this is called must. So we're gonna stir this up. And because I have the drill, it makes life even easier. You're also, in this process, aerating your mead, which is helpful. Very, very simple. Now I've, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pour the rest of my water in. The yeast is still rehydrating, and that's okay. We've got a little foam on top. That will go away over time. In fact, I wanna leave room for my yeast water on top of this. My yeast water is gonna finish in about seven or eight minutes, it needs some time to just acclimate, and uh, then we will put it in. One thing I do want to emphasize is that when you are making a mead, it is important that you know what you've put into your mead, so write down your ingredients. Um, and so of course, I will of course I will list the things I've used today in my video and down below. So we are going to actually get a gravity reading of our current must. So I'm gonna pour some of this into here. It is totally okay for their, for oxygen, oxygen to get um, involved in this stage of the mead making process. And that is because yeast are living creatures. They need oxygen to thrive. They need it to actually ferment on. And that's what kind of what they use to, um, to uh, ultimately like put out their CO2, put out their, their gases. So we are, it's okay to add some oxygen. In fact, when I'm stirring, I'm trying to add some oxygen in. This thing is called a hydrometer. A hydrometer is what reads the gravity of your mead. And your cheap mead, you still need to measure your gravity ultimately because you want to be able to know how alcoholic it is. Is it a 10% mead? Is it a 12% mead? Just in general, how alcoholic it is it? So I'm gonna go ahead and put this in here. And I've got a little foam action on the top and that will go away here in a second. But uh, this is measured, I use gravity. So, and this is what this, this uh, hydrometer is for. It measures the gravity of your mead. And I've got, I'm fighting some foam right now. So this is at 1.090 uh, gravity, which means that if you look on the side of your hydrometer or you go to any website that has an ABV reading, gravity reading, I am looking at roughly about a 10 point, I would say, or sorry, 11.75% ABV mead. That's my possibility. When you're reading this thing and you're going through that process, um, that is your possible alcohol volume. If your yeast can handle that, not to get in too much science because we're talking about budgetary mead, beginning mead possibly, um, your yeast have an, an ABV cap. For example, I know that my EC1118 has a cap of 18%. So this thing is meant for high gravity meads, which I am intending and I'm going to be using, um, I hope that's 18%, I could be wrong. I believe it's 18%, but because my uh, mead is only getting up to 11.7% ABV, my yeast will eat all of those sugars and this will hopefully, if all things go well, end up at 1.000 gravity, meaning, meaning all the sugars have been eaten. That's a lot of science for this process right now but you need to measure your gravities because that's how you know how alcoholic your meat is. If you don't, you have no idea how high ABV it is. And um, not that that's the end of the world, but it's nice to know that you've made 11% mead or 7% mead, whatever you've done. So next process, super simple. We're gonna pour this back in. We're waiting for our yeast, they're almost done. Just gonna pour that in right here. Still got a lot of foam on the top and that's okay. My yeast, we're gonna go ahead and put them in here. They have been rehydrated. They are ready to go ahead and be uh, introduced into this process. So what I'm gonna do is, I am simply going to pour them in. Now there's a couple ways you can do this. Um, you can of course, 
you can just sprinkle your yeast on top of your mead, which simply means just take the packet, pour it on, you're good. But uh, in this case, I rehydrated. It actually helps the, the yeast, uh, you know, acclimate better, and they need to be able to survive. Next step, because this is the beginning to the end of this mead process of this $12 mead, we are going to um, actually, I'm going to put a little more water in here. It's going to cause some foaming action, and that is okay, because in fact, I'm just going to... Okay, so this foam will uh, eventually bubble down and become uh, liquid. We're going to go ahead now, put my airlock on. If you don't know what an airlock it is, is, it is just a device that you put some water in that keeps anything from getting into the mead. And of course, you need like a, a bung or something like this to keep, to put the airlock in. I'll put all of these things, by the way, in the description below. Anything you need um, is in my store, and you can uh, go through there and go through Amazon, purchase those things. I always write on my mead my uh, information of what this is. So this is, I'm using Alpha Alpha Blossom Honey. Um, I'm sorry, not Alpha Alpha, I'm, that's what I normally use. This is just uh, Clover Honey, oops, Clover Honey. And we started it on 3, 12, 20. That's for your reference too. I'll tell you at the end what the date is, how long this process takes. But, oh, I also write down the uh, starting gravity, 1 or 1.9 basically. I always write OG, one like in that gave my original gravity. Now, we're gonna put this away and then I'll be back in a little bit and I'll give you some updates on how it's fermenting and what to expect. But this is a $12 mead setup. So, hope you're enjoying so far. Make sure to hit like and subscribe. If you are interested in this, I've got more content for you. I'll be right back. Okay, we are about, this is only 12 hours, maybe 16 hours into fermentation. You can see that there's some bubble in action there, which means that we are fermenting already. So this is what to expect whenever you are making a mead. Hopefully within the first 24 hours, you have some uh, fermentation going. So I'll give you some more updates in a bit, but this is about 16 hours in. We're about 36 hours in, and this is kind of what to expect. You can know that your meat is fermenting well by the air bubbles there, or by your airlock above, which will uh, you know bubble up every once in a while. And there's a couple different styles of airlocks. There's that kind, and then there is this twin bubbler. But I like these three pieces, and this is what to expect. Okay, in your traditional mead, or your $12 mead we're making, this thing's still going. Um, it has been eight days now. You still see some fermentation happening. It's slowing down though. So uh, I assume this will be done pretty soon, and then we will uh, let it age for a little bit. All right, in our $12 mead setup, we're still fermenting slowly. I bet this will take a couple more days and finish out, and then uh, we'll be done. We can talk about the next step. All right, it is time to bottle this mead, the $12 traditional that we've made. Um, <clears throat> it is about 45 days into, or you know, since we made this mead, and uh, this process can go a little faster for you. However, I would not encourage you to bottle your mead too early. Um, I think this mark, 45 to like 60 days, is probably a good time if you wanted to bottle um, in order to bottle age it. So if you've never made a mead before, uh, this next step is going to be taking and putting it into bottles, and you're gonna need a few things. Of course, you need your mead. You need some sanitizer of some sort. I always put a product called Star Sand and distilled water into a water bottle, and I use this for a couple weeks to spray down everything. So I've sprayed down my bottles. I'll be using some um, crown oxygen crown caps for these beer bottles, and then of course, uh, some uh, corks for anything I cork, which I will be corking a few of these, and I'll um, tell you more about that here in a second. Most important thing to me, uh, and I think in general with all this, is to sanitize your stuff. Always do that. Super, super important. I do have a little taster of it here. One thing I do want to explain is that this mead right here is not the clearest thing that's ever existed, and that is totally okay. Is there, are there ways around that? Yeah. I could have a filtration system. I could be using some powders, um, some clearing agents and various things. I don't really wanna do that with this one. I wanna leave it as is. Clarity is not the end of the world for me. You might not agree, that's okay. I'm gonna go ahead and taste it. It's kind of what it looks like. It looks pretty good. So, um, I tasted it not long ago, but here it is again. That is a wonderful mead. It's got amazing honey character and 
Um, it's not too full, it's not too in your face. Uh, it started about, at about 1.090 gravity when we got to 1.000 with our yeast. This thing's fantastic. I'm, in, I'm looking forward to trying this thing after it's got some age on it. So uh, if you've never bottled or if you've never made a mead, make sure you are taste testing it semi-regularly to, uh, you know, see what it, how it changes. So let's go ahead and bottle it. Um, I'm going to explain the bottling process, then I'm just going to do it real fast. It's not super hard. Um, you basically take uh, your airlock and all this thing off. Then you want to make sure and sanitize everything. So I'm going to go ahead and spray my bottling wand down and my racking cane. Okay. And now I'm going to take bottling wand, or sorry, auto siphon with bottling wand at the bottom. Uh, if you want to know, uh, link to get all these things, it's in my description. And I have elevated this um, container because if you know anything about gravity, the liquid travels better when it goes from a higher to a lower place. So we're gonna be filling up each bottle in this auto siphon. There's not a lot of sediment at the bottom, not too concerned about um, sediment overtaking this or anything like that. Uh, I will mention this. There are a couple extra steps I could do with this mead. If I wanted to um, take it and make it sweeter, um, I would have to do, go through a process called back sweetening, um, in this case at least. So I would take and stabilize the mead with these two products called potassium sorbate, which is a stabilizer, and potassium metabisulfite, which is a stabilizer slash preservative. And I would um, put those two things into the mead, which would then halt the yeasts really productivity and uh, make it to where they couldn't chew up any more alcohol. And then I could add more honey in. I'm not doing it with this one, to be honest, because I like where it's at. I think it's got a great honey character. Um, it could be a little sweeter, but I'm not, honestly, I like the honey character that it has. So I'm leaving it as is. But you have that, that uh, ability. If you want to know more about that, I'll be putting out some videos of that in the future, or you can Google it if you're trying to do it immediately. So I'm going to finish uh, bottling all of these and then I'm going to cap them. I have a bench capper where I just do that I cap them and then I will uh, use my corking operator to cork the uh, one bottle that I will be corking uh, and then we will finish this video off. So I'll be right back. Okay we have finished capping, bottling, everything. In this one gallon mead, we ended up with um, not a ton of mead and it's because I did something kind of different. I used, uh, I did a, I filled a wine bottle which is equal to roughly about two to maybe two and a half beer bottles. Um, then this is about two beer bottles. And we ended up with five um, just regular beer bottles. So in total, this gave us probably about 10 bottles, which is pretty good considering it didn't go all the way to the top. We also lost a little bit at the bottom, and that's pretty natural because our sediment, all this stuff floating around at the bottom is not stuff you want in your mead, um, and that's okay. So once you get to, well, once you get to this point, if um, you have the utility to, you can put your own labels on them. What I will do is uh, I will put some temporary label, labels on them, and then I mix some official, quote, official labels, uh, and I put them on my stuff. So, for example, like here is one of my, quote, official labels, and maybe it's the light. Um, you can kind of see there. I will put this on with the correct information on to this bottle. These bottles, I should say. And it has inf the information, ingredients, ABV, all that stuff. You can just leave yours unlabeled if you want to. It doesn't really matter. The big thing is that you need to um, have written down somewhere the ingredients you used for this mead so you can reference it for later. Now let me address a couple things that you guys might, questions you might have in the comments. There are some people who are gonna look at this and go, that is not the cheapest uh, gallon of mead you can possibly make. I can make a gallon of mead for $3. Let's, let's kind of unpack that. Can you make a cheaper mead? Yes. If you have your own bees and you're not paying for honey, yeah, there you go. That takes about, you know, 10 bucks away from your cost. So you have a $2 mead, but not all of us do that. Um, if you were trying to use cheaper honey, then, uh, then I would say $10 for a, a 
three pounds, then you're probably getting into a rough range uh, where it's, it might not be the best kind of honey to use. So I discourage you from buying cheap honey because you will end up with a cheap mead. Um, we, you could save money by using tap water, yes. However, like I said earlier, the, there are certain things within tap water that might make it harder for a yeast to ferment. You could also use bread yeast, which is cheaper, all those things. You can make a cheaper mead, and um, I'm not gonna say that you can't. However, I think this is the cheapest, best mead you can make. Um, yeah, that was my big note about that, if you have any questions about that. Uh, whenever you're making your mead, write down your stuff. Make sure you have like a hydrometer or something to measure the gravity. Um, if you wanna find a, any uh, information about like buying those things, a hydrometer, uh, graduated cylinder, uh, uh, auto siphon, all that is in my store. You can go check it out. But um, yeah, that is a $12 mead right there. Some of you have probably made mead before, which is awesome. Please keep making mead. Some of you have not. And I hope that I've maybe opened the door for you to be able to do this. Uh, of course, that $12 does not take into account the glass carboy you might need or the plastic fermenter or any of the other equipment. Now, the reason I didn't include that is because that stuff's reusable. Your honey, water, yeast, not necessarily reusable. So your $12 of throwaway things <coughs> is there. So again, thank you guys for watching. $12, really not too bad. Um, 45 days for this whole mead process. I'd say that's pretty short. That's pretty good um, for this product. So if you have any questions, leave them below. Um, if you want to support the channel, make sure you hit like and subscribe. That really helps me out because I can continue to push out content to you guys. And hopefully um, if you like it, then I know that you liked it. But I will, will be back with some more content. Um, and I have lots of it on the channel. So I'm really excited to share stuff with you guys in the future. I hope you will tune in for more videos and I will see you then. So with that, thanks for watching. Cheers.